Now that we have the create the ability to create an account with our Axum server, it's time for us to be able to log in. Now, logging in happens when we've previously created an account, our user comes back and wants to uh, get a new token. Basically, they want to prove that they are who they say they are. And they're gonna do this with the same username and the same password that they used before. Let's go ahead and set up uh, exactly what I mean here. We'll use Thunder Client first. So our collections data, let's create a new request. And this is gonna be login. So I'm gonna do another post for this, even though we're not really creating anything in the database, um, post just sort of makes sense compared to how I see everybody else implementing login. So it should be familiar to anybody else hitting your API. We're gonna to go to HTTP, local host, uh, port 3000, uh, and I want to go to users and login. So we're not just going straight to users, but we're just gonna to go to to log in here. Uh, for our body, we're going to send in uh, a username. Uh, this is, what did I create last time? It was, yeah, I wanna create, I wanna send in this exact same thing here. And this is how we prove that I am who I say I am. Uh, obviously, we get a 404 not found because this specific route doesn't doesn't exist yet. All right, let's uh, let's now go implement this. Now, I was thinking because in create user here, we have our request user and we have our response user, and both of these are exactly the same request coming in for login that I want for you know just responding out. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename create user here just to users. Uh, VS Code is automatically updating mod to help us out. Uh, and then users here, we, um, we're gonna keep create user, but I'm gonna add in a pub async function login. And we're gonna go use this in mod. So here's create user, we'll add login, and we'll create a route for that. So route uh, users login, and that's gonna be a post with login. Okay, should, should be happy. If I now attempt to log in, we get the 200 okay. It doesn't do anything yet, but uh, let, let's fix that up. So what do we need coming in? Well, we know we need this JSON of the request user. So let's add that in right away. So we have JSON request user. Uh, we know we need that extension with the database. Um, and I don't think we necessarily need anything else. What are we gonna return? Uh, we're gonna return a result. Uh, this doesn't automatically have everything. Okay, we're just gonna have a JSON of the response user and just a status code in case something goes wrong. Okay, so uh, logging in means going and finding the user by the username and then comparing the passwords to make sure that they, they exist. Um, normally we'd want the usernames to be absolutely unique. Otherwise we'd be very confused about like which user we're constantly logging in and out. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why people like to use emails as, as their usernames. Uh, but most often it's just because they want to force getting an email from the users. Okay. So, uh, we want to get, get our database user equals. Okay. So let's do our users find so I have oh I don't have users in here so let's pull in use crates database users uh, this is going to be the entity as users I can now use users find well we're not going to be able to do find by ID because we don't know what the ID is 
So we're just gonna have to do a find. Uh, we do know we can do a filter. So it's gonna be users, uh, column, username is equal. Okay, we wanna make sure that it's equal to the request user username. Okay. Uh, now I probably don't want to take ownership of this. Now, when we take a look at this, this needs to be a, it needs to be an owned value, or at least it needs to go into a value. Wonder if I can reference that so I don't take ownership of it. Uh, I want one thing. So we do one, we await this. Uh, we then map we then map the error. If we get this error, we're going to return a status code of internal server error. And we can then uh, question mark semicolon that. Uh, we have an option of a user. Okay. So if, for example, or if for some reason we can't find this user, it's probably because we don't have the username. Uh, so in that case, let's go ahead and uh, return a 404. So if let some db db user equals db user. Uh, we'll do our logic here. So this is where we're going to um, like do the login. Else we can't find the user. So here we're going to return an error, status code uh, not found. Okay, so that gives us the 404 error. Uh, you're upset because, well, we're, we're not returning the same, well, we're not returning the same general type. Uh, we want, we have access to the DB user, so we can now create the, uh, uh, the final user as it were. So JSON, uh, we want a response user. Okay, username, we want this to be the db user dot username. That's a full string, so that's fine. Uh, the db user dot ID and db, well, before we do this, do we want to just use the token that we have in the database? What if it's nothing? What if it's like the same token and it's been a while? We probably want to create a new token at login time. So every time we log in, we, we're basically saying, okay, wherever you logged in previously is no longer allowed. Now, in that case, this would only allow like a single session for a user to exist at the same time. Uh, and that's fine, uh, at least in my specific use case here. If you have a use case where you need somebody to be logged in on like four or five different devices at the same time, then you need to do a little bit of extra logic to verify which, do you need to create a new token? Do you wanna use that same token? Um, how do you know? Uh, that's gonna be uh, outside of the scope for this course, but something you might want to keep in mind if you are creating your own auth system. Okay, so we want to create a new token here, which means we can't really, can't really return yet, can we? Go ahead and uh, throw in a to do here. We'll get back to this in a little bit. First of all, we have to create a brand new token. So that uh, this is a new token equals uh, completely random, of course. All to owned this. Um, we need to take the DB user as a model and make it into a uh, we need, we need to make it into a active model. Okay. So let's do, uh, let's, um, this is now going to be a user. We're going to be updating. So I'm just going to call it user to be slightly different. Equals DB user dot into active model. Now we need to make this mutable. Uh, we're going to set 
the token as this new token here. So user dot uh, token equals set uh, some new token. Uh, and then we need to save this. Now, when we save, okay, so we're gonna do user dot save. Uh, when we save, we're gonna get that result with self and the error. Okay, so we can basically do uh, let saved user equals. We're going to save, pass it in a reference to the database. Uh, we are going to await. Uh, we're going to map the error. So in case there is a failure here, this is our problem. So I want to return with a status code of internal server error. And we're going to question mark semicolon that. So that gives us another active model again, but now we have this as the saved user. So great. Now, now we can return this and we can get rid of this to do. Okay, um, so in this case, I don't wanna get this from the DB user anymore. I wanna get this from the saved user, uh, but these are all part of active models, which means we need to unwrap it. For the token, we need to do kind of the same thing. So it's gonna be saved user, token, unwrap, but that still gives us an option here. So let's do an unwrap a second time to get the token out of it. We know it has it because we just saved it. Uh, what are you upset about? The treat bound. So, his name, not satisfied. Okay, so I can't use a reference here. Now, if I take ownership of this, it's going to be a little bit is it going to be a little bit upset? No, it's going to be fine. Okay, never mind. We're going to take ownership of uh, username out of request user. Oh, I guess I'm not using this ever again. So that's fine. We're just going to give ownership over. Uh, let's go ahead and go to login and see if this works now. Here we go. So we log in and we see our username, our ID, and our token, which was slightly different than uh, this token that we got when we created our account last time. Every time that we hit send, we are technically getting a new token, even if it just happens to be the same here. Uh, we'll be changing that later when we, uh, when we switch to a better way to make tokens. So um, uh, that, that's it, we have login. Our front end now can use this token to make a secure request to our back end. We haven't set that up yet, but that, that's coming up. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.